Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday, right? Monday. Um, popping on, God dropped a big word on my heart for today um, <clears throat> that I want to read you guys out of the book of First Samuel. We're going to be in chapter 17 today, kind of doing a little bit of a deeper dive here. And um, basically, I'll kind of tell you how the word started off. Let me grab some coffee while people are hopping on here. I'm still trying to wake up for the morning. Okay. Um, but basically, this word comes from, I was having kind of my personal prayer time this morning with the Lord. And um, I wasn't even thinking about this, but God just put a vision in front of my face, kind of a deal. And it was of this guy, and he was staring at this giant. Um, and... It looks, um, I don't know how to describe it. I just knew it was a demonic kind of a giant kind of a deal in the context of this vision, and that was the vision. And so I immediately paused after getting that vision this morning, and I said, God, tell me more about this. And he basically said, Jill, it was a giant of intimidation, a giant of intimidation. And um, basically what we're going to unpack today is basically that we are in a significant time period right now where these giants of intimidation hey cheryl good morning <laughs> i'm glad you are looking for coffee too <laughs> that's awesome um we're in a significant time period where these giants of intimidation are really rearing their ugly head right now and the reason is because a lot of you guys are at destiny doors you know in so many different ways whether you realize it or not um i released a word i think it was yesterday that was talking about the fear attacks that are going on right now. So this is kind of just um, not a continuation per se, because we're going to go a lot deeper than that word <laughs> yesterday. But it's basically God's talking about um, kind of a similar concept where the enemy is ramping up that place of intimidation. He is ramping up that place of fear right now in so many people's lives because he doesn't want you to face the giants. He wants you to retreat. He wants you to run backwards. He wants you to stay in a place of comfort. You know, he wants you to react just based on what you're seeing in the natural and not based on what the God report is saying over your circumstances. Um, and so these giants of intimidation are really rearing their ugly heads because the enemy is terrified of you stepping into destiny promises. The enemy is terrified of you stepping into your callings. You know, um, the things that God has for you in different areas of your life. And so this is really the attack um, that has been going on right now. And so that's kind of why we're going to do a deeper dive today as God was really showing me that we are at a critical moment right now in the spirit. So many of you guys are at a really, really critical place and we got to get a battle strategy. Amen. Um, and so that's what we're going to be chatting through today. So our scripture as you guys could probably imagine, is actually going to be talking about David and Goliath today. Um, and so basically, we're going to be chatting through some of the very important things that God led David through and some of the victories that he experienced after he went and faced off with Goliath. Okay, and I'll tell you what Goliath is symbolic of, and I'll kind of walk you through this step by step as we go through the scripture today. So the first thing that I feel like the enemy attacks in us a lot of the time when we are at destiny doors or pivotal moments of transition or of stepping into new things is he will try to attack your authority in Christ. He will try to attack you in that place of not knowing who you are as a child of God in Christ. He will try to make the mountain, the storm, whatever this is symbolic of, right, appear so much bigger than God's ability in your personal life. Um, and I want to tell you guys, this can be very symbolic of different things in your personal life. These giants of intimidation or whatever that situation looks like in your life, or maybe multiple situations for a lot of you guys, that seem like they're too big for God to handle. Maybe because the the longevity of the thing, maybe you've been dealing with the sickness in your body for years, and it just feels like because you've been dealing with it for so long, um, <clears throat> that you're never going to get any relief. Maybe this represents an addiction that you've been struggling with and your heart is in the right place you don't want to be dealing with it anymore but you just can't seem to shake this thing right you know maybe it represents you know seasons of loss in your personal life cycles of loss where it just feels like every time you try to get ahead you get knocked backwards um some of this could be linked to generational stuff 
in your family line, stuff that you just can't seem to get around that keeps plaguing and hitting you, you know, over and over and over again. These giants of intimidation, you know, really represent areas where the enemy has been able to keep you in a stronghold. He's been able to prevent you from moving forward in different areas of your life for a long time, it seems like in a lot of ways, right? And so there's victory on the other side of facing these giants, quote unquote, in our personal lives. What the enemy wants us to do is to run and to hide when these giants of intimidation stand before us in our personal lives. You know, he wants us to think that it's all in our own strength. He doesn't want us to face off with these Goliaths in our personal life. He doesn't want us to face off with these things because he knows that if you face off with these things, there's victory on the other side. Amen. He knows that if you figure out who you are in Christ and your authority as a child of God, that he's in big trouble. Amen. And so that's why he ramps up the intimidation and the fear attacks. That's why he tries to make this stuff seem so much bigger than God in your personal life is because he is terrified of you stepping into a place of victory. Amen. Because he knows what's on the other side of that. Amen. He knows that there's victory not only for you, but for the people around you. You know, some of you guys don't understand that's why there's been so much warfare attached to, you know, these areas that it just feels like you haven't been able to overcome in a past season is because not only is your victory attached to these things, Amen. Some of you guys are going to be helping to lead a whole crew of other people through as soon as these victories are overcome in your personal life. You know, as soon as some of you guys experience these breakthroughs, they're going to have a direct effect on a bunch of other people as well. And so this is why the enemy does not want you guys breaking through into this stuff. This is why these giants of intimidation are really rearing their ugly heads right now is because, you know, a lot of you guys are glory carriers. Amen is what I like to call it. A lot of you guys are forerunners in the body of Christ who, when there's breakthrough that happens in your life, there's going to be a whole lot of other people who come right on behind you. Amen. And you are opening doors, quote unquote, in the spirit. Amen. And you're going to help to lead a bunch of other people through, right? And so basically we god is calling the body of christ to this place right now where he is saying don't run from the things that scare you face them call them out speak to these things in the name of jesus amen and you know this can be a very scary thing when it's something that you've dealt with for a long time amen when it's something that seems impossible you know that's many of the circumstances that you guys are up against in your personal lives these aren't little things these are things that look absolutely impossible that God is asking you to face, that there's no solution in the natural that could help with these things for a lot of you guys. It's going to have to be a move of God to knock down some of these giants. They're way bigger than you. These, these things are way stronger than you. You know, the impact is going to have to have a supernatural solution for a lot of you guys. Amen. But I want to tell you guys, you are not battling this stuff on your own, contrary to what the enemy, the enemy is trying to say and the enemy report is trying to ramp up right now. Remember that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen. And so don't try to just put it all on yourself and then your own strength and your own ability right now in this season as God is trying to help you to face a lot of these things in your personal life. Remember that it's in him that we have the victory. Amen. And, you know, God is really trying to get people out of a place of depending on solely their own strength. And a lot of times the reason we go there is because of past seasons of trauma or things that have happened to us in our personal life. And God's going, I got you. I need you to lean in to me right now in this season. I need you to rely on me. Amen. Because God wants to help to go before you in the place of battle as you are facing these things in your personal life to help to give you victory. Amen. And so let me kind of walk you through scripture today. Again, we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to start actually just straight up in verse, uh, we'll start in verse one. Why not? Okay, it says, Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle and were assembled at Skok, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between there and Ezekah uh, and Ephestanim. Saul and the men of Israel were encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. 
I think it's very symbolic, I want to pause there for a second, that both armies are standing on mountains, and there's this valley in between both of them. What does scripture say? It says, speak to the mountain and command it to be cast into the sea. Amen. So they're literally staring at this army that's on a mountain. Amen. A lot of you guys, I think what we do in times of high warfare a lot of the time is we will talk all about the mountains that we are facing in our personal lives, right? We'll talk about the sickness. We'll talk about the lack in our finances. We'll talk about that family member that's acting out. <laughs> you know, we'll ask for prayer for everybody, right? But how much of our time are we actually spending speaking to the mountain and commanding it to be cast into the sea in the name of Jesus? Amen. I think this is so symbolic, right? And so if you aren't careful, if you stare at that mountain long enough in your personal life, you'll believe it to be bigger and stronger than God. Amen. And so that's why it's so important to keep your sight fixed up right now in this season, ladies and gents. Okay, let's keep going. Verse four, and a champion went out of the camp of the Philistines called Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span or almost 10 feet. That's a tall dude, ladies and gents. I I've never seen a 10 foot person in my life. You know, you think six feet is tall, try <laughs> 10 feet tall, right? This was a pretty intimidating looking thing, right? And so half of the problem with Goliath was just the pure intimidation factor that this dude carried, right? You know, and so this is what they were up against, right? Verse five, and he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of mail and the coat weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had a bronze shin armor on his legs and a bronze javelin across his shoulders. And the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. His spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and a shield bearer went before him. And so, um, let me make sure that I'm getting all my notes here. Oh, okay. Um, after that description of this guy, he seemed absolutely impenetrable, right? And that's what a lot of you guys are facing in your circumstances. That addiction at this point seems impenetrable. You've tried to attack it every way that you know how in your personal life, and you're still not getting breakthrough. You know, that financial breakthrough seems so off and so impossible at this point that you're just like, God, why do I even keep trying? You know, that health battle that you've been facing, doctors are out of options. They don't know what to tell you anymore. You've exhausted every single thing that you can in the natural, and you're going, God, I literally don't know what to do with this anymore. I've prayed, I've fasted, I've been to all the doctors. You know, I don't know what to do with this, right? A lot of you guys are at these moments and these situations and these mountains that just seem like they are absolutely impossible to cross right now. And this is very much what it felt like facing this giant in the Bible, right? Verse eight, Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. That is a powerful statement, ladies and gents. That's why there's so much warfare attached to your stuff right now that you're facing in your personal life. The enemy is wanting you to compromise and to bow down and to have to serve him for the rest of your life. That's why these intimidation attacks are coming as a lot of you guys are at pivotal turning points in the spirit right now. And you don't understand that these things that you have been battling in your personal life are critical because when you obtain victory over these areas where the enemy has been trying to come at you in these different you know, ways, Basically, it's going to cause there to be a flip in the spirit. Amen. Whereas before you felt like you were just fighting for your life for a long time, there's going to be this changing, quote unquote, where then the enemy is going to have to serve God. Amen. It's going to be God calling the shots, right? Listen to this scripture again. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. It has to do with authority. Amen. When you realize your authority in Christ and you put your foot down and you say, no devil, you're going to quit stealing from my finances in Jesus name. No devil. I'm not going to tolerate this place of addiction anymore. I know my worth in Christ and I'm going to stand up to you in the name of Jesus, not through my own strength, but through God. And I'm not going to put up with this anymore. Right? When you understand who you are in Christ, and when you refuse to give up, even when it seems like nothing is shifting in the natural, when you face these giants in your personal life, eventually they're going to end up serving you, not because of anything that we've done personally, but because of the Jesus inside of us and the victory that he has already won for us on the cross. Amen? So there's this flipping 
that's going to go down in the spirit as you face these giants of intimidation, right? So they will be your servants. Amen. All of these attacks, all of this stuff that you've been up against, right? It says, but if, if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Amen. And so this is what the enemy is trying to do. He is trying to keep you in a place of confinement. God's been talking to me a lot recently too. I almost did a separate word on this recently. Um, <clears throat> but on attacks with trying to make people feel trapped and confined. Amen. If anybody's been feeling like that, wave a hand at me in the chat. Hey, Tracy, good morning. Um, but that's, that's a whole other attack that the enemy has been trying to bring through ramping up a python and all this other stuff right now is trying to keep people confined, trying to prevent people from leaving that cocoon season, kind of of what I was talking about yesterday, where he wants you to feel like you can't advance. He wants you to feel like you're just perpetually going to stay in what I like to call a stuck place, right? And so that's what the attacks have been doing right now. And so that's what the enemy wants you to do. He doesn't want you to face these giants of intimidation that are going on right now in your personal life because he wants you to continue to be his servant. These, you know, a lot of you guys don't understand that there are bigger battles at play here than you could ever imagine. Amen. He wants you to continue to serve divination in your personal life that has been controlling you. He wants you to continue to serve pride. You know, he wants you to continue to serve control and manipulation, these demonic spirits that are in operation in your personal life. He wants you to be servant to them. Amen. And the way that you are a servant to them is when you refuse to face these things. Amen. And to conquer them in the name of Jesus in your personal life. And so the way that he tries to cause you to retreat, to not take territory, to not move forward, is he tries to cause you to not face these giants of intimidation in your personal life by causing extreme fear, by causing fatigue, by causing all of these things. And I can guarantee you, a lot of you guys have probably been dealing with these attacks of the extreme fatigue of just being tired of the warfare, of wanting to give up in your personal life, because this is very much the battle that has been going on in so many believers' lives right now. And then it's the mental battle too. It's not just a physical battle. Some of you guys have been legit fighting physically in some different ways in your personal life, but there is a mental battle where their stuff can just begin to wear on you. Amen. And that's what the enemy has been doing to so many of you guys. It is the torture, not as much of the giant that is standing in front of you, but of the battle that's been going on in your mind, right? This mental warfare of the back and forth and back and forth, and you feel like you've got victory. And then you'll kind of relapse a little bit because the thoughts will start to come in and the fear will start to creep up and it will just feel like anxiety overload in your personal life when you start to think about situations. And then you're trying to figure it out on your own strength, you know, and this whole cycle just continues in your personal life, right? But God is wanting to break and deliver and set you guys free from that in Jesus name, myself included. I've been dealing with it too in some different areas of my personal life, but you got to remember who you are in Christ. Amen. And even more important than that, you've got to remember who your God is. Amen. Remember who's fighting for you, ladies and gents. All right. Verse 10. And the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. This is where the fear comes in, ladies and gents. And so basically, you know, a lot of you guys don't understand that some of these giants that you are facing in your personal life, it's all talk. Amen. This intimidation, all of this stuff that's been going down, it looks scary, but something relatively simple is going to take it out in your personal life. You know, there's a specific prayer that's going to take out that giant. There's a specific action of obedience that God's going to cause you to act upon in the natural that's going to break that thing that has just seemed like it's not budging in your personal life. Amen. And I just want to encourage you guys today, the, the attacks of fear, the enemy's trying to ramp the stuff up so much in your personal life right now because he's actually afraid of you. Ladies and gents, he is terrified of you knowing your authority in Christ. He is terrified of the name of Jesus. You know, he is terrified of what would happen if you knew who you were in Christ and of you breaking through these things that he has set up against you in the spirit and in the natural. He's terrified of that. And so what he's going to do to try to get you to retreat because you've already got the victory. Amen. So what he tries to do is he tries to get you to give up your authority. He tries to get you to retreat so that you never face the giant because he knows, even if you don't know, a lot of times we're clueless on this part, but he knows that you've already got victory over him. 
Amen. And so he'll ramp up these intimidation and fear attacks ahead of time to try to get you to retreat and to not step into the promises that God has for your personal life. Amen. Don't retreat right now, ladies and gents face these giants of intimidation. There are critical moments of breakthrough we're about to learn that are going to come through facing these things in your personal life. Amen. And God is the one with the victory. Let's keep going. All right. Um, so I'm going to skip down a little bit for time's sake. Um, I'll read you verse 16. The Philistine came out morning and evening presenting himself for 40 days. Um, let me keep going. Verse 17. And Jesse said to David, his son, take your brothers and ephah of this parched grain and these 10 loaves and carry them quickly to your brothers at the camp. Uh, da, da, da. Verse 19. I did want to pause on this part and talk to you guys about this. Now Saul and his brothers and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Okay. So I want you guys to notice before this Goliath showdown, quote unquote, ever went down, there was fighting that was already going on for a long time. Okay. So not even talking about the big strong man giant thing, right? There was a lot of fighting that was already going on between the camps, right? And so that's what a lot of you guys have already been facing in your personal life. You've already been in the midst of a lot of this battle and this warfare for a long time. And now it feels like, God, you're asking me to face this giant. You know, I've already been in the warfare. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. You know, we've been battling and duking this stuff out for forever in the spirit. You know, a lot of you guys have been really fighting this stuff in a place of prayer. You've been really trying to deal with your stuff in this season. A lot of you guys have been so totally surrendered and obedient to God. And you've been saying, and God have your way in my personal life, but you're just tired. Ladies and gents, I want to tell you guys, the, the Goliath, these giants of intimidation happen at the end of the battle. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know this stuff has been going on for a long season. You've been in the place of warfare, right? But I want to tell you guys today when the, that when that big strong man, quote unquote, when Goliath comes down, the rest of the army flees. Amen. And so I want to encourage you guys not to give up today. We're about to read this in scripture, but I want to tell you guys that ahead of time. Okay. Verse 20. So David rose up early the next morning, left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions and went to Jess and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host going forth to the battleground shouted the battle cry. And Israel and the Philistines put the battle in array, army against army. David left his packages in the care of the bag, baggage keeper and ran into the ranks and came and greeted his brothers. As they talked, behold, Goliath, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, came forth from the Philistine ranks and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. Notice it's repeated attacks of intimidation. A lot of you guys have experienced this too. It's not just once or twice that the enemy has been talking to you with these attacks of intimidation. So much of this is mental warfare, just as much as it is a battle in the natural, ladies and gents. And so they're facing these, you know, really, really big attacks of mental attacks of intimidation right now, right? Um, and so a lot of this represents in your personal life taunting and mocking spirits like the enemy is mocking you in this place of you haven't been able to overcome in different areas of your personal life yet there's been a really big shame component to this i feel like um you know just in a lot of different areas, maybe you've been trying to overcome an addiction, right? There's been a lot of shame that the enemy's try been trying to put on you. Have you tried to face this giant before in your personal life? It's never worked out before. What makes you think that this time's going to be any different? You know, a lot of shame of you should be further along in your life by now. You know, a lot of you guys feel like you should be further along in your career. A lot of you guys feel like you should be further along in your personal relationships, further along in your health journey, whatever this looks like, right? And so there's been a lot of shame that the enemy has been trying to bring on people through these mocking these taunting spirits and that's exactly what Goliath was doing he was trying to mock he was trying to taunt you know he was trying to get him focused on all the wrong stuff right and how many of you guys know that those attacks can also wear on you amen and so basically let's keep going there's a whole other spiel I could go into but let's keep going for time's sake here. Okay. 
Um, all right. And, uh, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, terrified. There's the fear factor coming in again, right? And the Israelite said, have you seen this man who comes out? Surely he has come to defy Israel. And the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and make his father's house free from taxes and service in Israel. Okay, pause. So a lot of you guys don't understand that the reason this warfare has been so intense as well is because it's going to set off a chain reaction of breakthroughs in your personal life when Goliath quote unquote comes down whatever that represents in your personal life right notice that the reward that it listed it says whoever kills this dude right the king's going to give great riches um it'll give you know there's going to be a marriage that comes out of this not to just anyone but to a princess right the daughter of a king right and basically they're not going to have to pay for their housing anymore taxes and service so this person's going to be set up for a life whoever takes this dude down right and a lot of you guys the other reason the warfare has been so intense is because there's back-to-back -back breakthroughs associated with just coming against this thing in the spirit and i want to tell you guys today that these attacks have come to try to keep you paralyzed. A lot of you guys may have even been using that word in your personal lives. It's, it's a, an attack to keep you from taking ground, from taking territory in your personal life. Um, but God is wanting to deal with this place of taunting in your wilderness season to put a silence to the enemy. Amen. Um, Goliath, this is the other thing I want to get across to you guys. Goliath is not just a man. Okay, I want you guys to think about this symbolically and spiritually, right? He was a symbol of a high-ranking demonic principality, okay? A high-ranking demon kind of a situation going on. You know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? And I think that so often we forget this because you're just staring at that mountain in the natural of whatever it is that you've been having a hard time breaking through or overcoming. A lot of you guys don't realize that that Goliath in your personal life is actually a really big demonic stronghold of some sort. That is a really big demonic entity of a high rank a lot of the time that you've been coming up against, a strong man, right? Something of this nature. And that's why it's been so tough. And that's why when this thing gets taken out in your personal life, whatever this thing is that's been stubborn that has not been willing to move ladies and gents when that thing gets taken out in Jesus name that's where the overflow of blessing comes in a lot of the time because you didn't realize but it's almost like there's a net in the spirit okay work with me I'm just trying to give you guys a visual right where all of these blessings get caught up because there is this strong man, this stronghold that is standing and as a barrier that is preventing this stuff from breaking through. Amen. But once you defeat this giant, quote unquote, in the spirit, this breakthrough, a blessing can come funneling through in your personal life. Amen. That's why there's been so much warfare associated with these things, ladies and gents. But guess what? The giants are going to fall in Jesus name, but you got to stand up to him. Don't retreat in this hour in a place of fear, ladies and gents. Okay. Verse 26. And David said to the men standing by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? In other words, David's starting to know and recognize who he is in Christ. He's going, they're not just coming against me. This attack is coming against God. Amen. He's going, who are they to think that they can stand against God? We need to get a little bit of that in our spirits right now, ladies and gents, as you're staring at these situations and these circumstances that seem like they are just not budging, right? And the men told him, thus shall it be done for the man who kills him. This is another attack that's subtle, but I want you guys to notice this because I bet some of you guys have been fighting this as well. Verse 28. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard what he had said to these men, and Eliab's anger kindled against David. And he said, why did you come here? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? <laughs> I know your presumptions and evilness of heart. You came down that you might see the battle. Wow. And so this is really, really powerful. So in verse 28, Eliab is basically David's eldest brother. And, you know, he kind of sees, and this is interesting. I feel like this happens in our personal lives a lot of the time too. 
sometimes people see your anointing for breakthrough in your personal life before you even recognize it yourself. Amen. And Eliab was dealing with a little bit of jealousy here. Amen. He's going, who are you to think you can come against this guy? You know, I've been out here on the battle. I'm one of the ones who was originally sent. You weren't even sent to face this thing, David. He goes, you belong in the wilderness with the sheep. People saw David at a lower level in their minds, right? And so the enemy was trying to use this brother, whether he realized it or not, to try to bring discouragement into David's life, to try to belittle and to shame him. You know, listen to the wording of what this brother said. Why did you come here? In other words, you don't belong here. You don't belong in the place of victory. You don't belong in the place of overcoming and stepping into these new promises. You belong in your wilderness season over here. And this is what the enemy will do. He will try to raise up voices of people around you, trying to keep you in that confined place, trying to keep you in that trapped place quote unquote, in your personal life. Amen. Trying to speak fear into your personal life. All right. Trying to cause you to doubt your authority and your identity in Christ. That's exactly what this attack was that was being raised up. Why did you come here? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evilness of your heart, for you came down that you might see battle. In other words, he's trying to accuse him of doing wrong by going to battle for the Lord doesn't make any sense, does it? And yet these were the attacks that were going on. And I want to tell you guys, a lot of times these attacks will come from the people that are closest to you. A lot of you guys have been experiencing attack from family. A lot of you guys have been experiencing attack from close friends. They've been saying, don't go start that business. You're not good enough to do that. You know, don't try to face off with these things in your personal life. You're never going to get victory. We know you, you know, don't listen to this stuff, ladies and gents. It's part of the attacks of intimidation that are going on right now. Amen. It's it's all this big battle strategy from the enemy to keep you from facing the stuff that you need to face in your personal life. Amen. Verse 29. And David said, what have I done now? Was it not a harmless question? And David turned away from Eliab to another, and he asked the same question, and these men gave him the same answer. When David's words were heard, they were repeated to Saul, and he sent for him. Keep in mind, up until this point of time, David was kind of an unknown entity, okay? Now, they might have known of him from around the water cooler, but David was not someone who is a well-known name like his brothers were, okay? His brothers were the ones who were invited into battle. David was just the one bringing food back and forth, <laughs> ladies and gents. David was not well known but it was this you know moment that was going to put David on the map amen and a lot of you guys don't understand a lot of us want to just step into breakthrough without having to face any kind of warfare or any kind of battles and I wish it was that way ladies and gents <laughs> but unfortunately a lot of the time that's just not the way it works think about the people that we remember the most in the Bible what do we remember them for we remember them for those moments where they overcame where they faced insurmountable trials and hardships in their personal lives and yet God supernaturally came through they experienced victory amen you know God God wants to bring solutions in your personal life. And a lot of you guys are facing these problems because it's what you're going to be known for one day, not for the problems themselves, but for the overcoming. Amen. And a lot of you guys are at these pivotal breakthrough moments in your personal life, you know, where you've been staring at these problems that have just been happening in cycles in your personal life that it seems like you haven't been able to overcome. But Esther's, you're going to be known for how you delivered the Jews one day. You know, David, you're going to be known for how you took out the giant one day. Joseph, you're going to be known for how you went from the prison cell into the palace in a moment. Amen. So I want to tell you guys, don't give up. You know, I, a lot of times these battles, when we're in the moment and we're facing them, it's not fun. Amen. But your victory comes on the other side, ladies and gents. Okay. Um, verse 32. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of this Philistine. Your servant will go out and fight with him. In other words, David is expressing his willingness to face the giant of intimidation. Amen. This is what we've got to make the decision of in our personal lives. Amen. We've got to make the decision to face these giants of intimidation in our lives and not to run from them. So that was the first thing that David did correctly, right? Verse 33. And Saul said to David, you were not able to go and fight against this Philistine. You were only an adolescent and he has been a warrior from his youth. Now he's pulling the experience card. 
And man, a lot of you guys have had people doing this to you, trying to tell you all the ways you're unqualified to take out these quote unquote giants in your personal life. You're not qualified to start that business. You've never done this before. You don't even know the first steps to this. You're not qualified to write that book. You couldn't even pass English classes in high school. What makes you think that you're gonna be able to step into this? You're not qualified to step into a place of marriage. Look at what a hot mess your life is. You know, pick whatever area this is, right? Um, but this is what these spirits try to do, and they will blatantly try to tell you. Notice that this wasn't just trying to sneak around the point, right? Saul said, you're not qualified. But notice that David wouldn't take no for an answer. Amen. This is what these voices of intimidation will try to do. They'll be very direct with you and very blunt, right? Okay, but that's why you got to know who you are in Christ. All right? And David said to Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. And when there came a lion, again, or a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and smote it and delivered the lamb out of its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and smote it and killed it. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God." David said, the Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Here's the other deal, ladies and gents. This is what your training has been all about in this past season. Amen. All the warfare, all of this junk that you have faced in your personal life, it has been preparing you for these Goliath moments. Amen. You know, Basically, these giants of intimidation in your personal life are trying to come in and to tell you that you are not prepared for these critical moments that are coming up. They've been trying to tell you that you are not going to be able to have success over these different areas of your personal life. But I want to tell you guys, that's the whole purpose of what this past season has been. God has been doing exactly that. He's been preparing you to take out Goliath. He's been preparing you for these big moments in your personal life. Amen. So don't let the devil lie to you ladies and gents that's what this whole past season has been about for a lot of you amen god has been preparing you in this wilderness for these moments that you're about to face stepping into this new season amen all right let's keep going verse 38 then saul clothed david with his armor he put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail and david girded his sword over his armor then he tried to go but could not for he was not used to it and David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I am not used to them. And David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's lunch bag, a whole kid's skin slung from his shoulder and his pouch, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. Amen. So this is another critical thing, right? He's drawing near to the giant of intimidation, right? He's not shrinking back from this thing. He's getting, he's closing in on it. Amen. Right? And so the other thing that I want to emphasize through this passage is the importance of staying in your secret place with the Lord right now. God is releasing unconventional battle strategies to his people right now. Things that you wouldn't think would take out the giant are the key to taking out the giant in your personal life right now. And the way that you're going to stay locked into those things is through a place of prayer. Amen. It's through being able to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, some of you guys, it's going to be as simple as going on walks without your headphones, without music in, and just praying and listening to God. Some of you guys, it's going to be as simple as you creating that space in the mornings or in the evenings where you're sitting down with your Bible and where you're just listening to the Lord. Creating that space to hear from God and asking him what his battle strategy is. You know, I think it's interesting that the world strategy was not going to work with taking out Goliath, which is why the world had been un successful taking out this giant of intimidation, aka Goliath, right? You know, the world was trying to approach it with Saul's armor. Amen. But David goes, this doesn't feel right. This isn't the way that I've been trained. Ladies and gents, you need to revert to the way that God has been training you in this past season. Amen. God, a lot of you guys don't realize God has already been giving you the tools that you need to overcome these giants in this past season. And so David you know, initially tried to do what the world wanted him to do, right? And then he kind of just shrugged off. He was like, I, I can't operate this way. This doesn't feel natural. This doesn't feel like the way that God has trained me. And so he took off Saul's armor 
And then he goes, you know what, I'm going to go find some stones, you know, because the thing about David is he needed the ability to think and to move fast. Amen. And a lot of you guys don't understand that, you know, a lot of you guys are expecting this to be a long drawn out battle when you go to face these giants. No, when you battle God's way, when you use God's strategy, you might be surprised at how easily these things that seem so big in your personal life get taken out. Five smooth stones, boom, the dude's, you know, flat on his face, right? <laughs> you know, and so this is why it's so important to stay plugged in and to battle God's way, whether it's in our prayer closets, whether it's through simple actions of obedience, amen, these things, it just seems like, oh no, God, the warfare is going to go on for another five years. I'm facing the biggest giant I've ever faced. Oh no, God, I'm already so weary. I'm already in the middle of this. It's never going to get taken out. No, in a moment, <laughs> amen, through an unconventional battle strategy, Goliath was taken out, ladies and gents. You know, a lot of times we make this so much bigger in our heads than it actually is when the solution is relatively simple. Amen. And isn't that so often the way that God works in our personal lives, right? <laughs> we make it this big, complicated thing when in reality, God's going, it's done. It's finished. Do you believe that it's finished? Amen. You know, that's the victory in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. It is finished. Those were literally the last words that he said, right? He said, it is finished. Amen. And if we would operate from that place of it is finished, if we would realize in our lives that we're not fighting for victory, we're fighting from victory. Amen. It would give us so much comfort. And I think that David secretly realize this or maybe not so secretly realize this amen he knew that he was already fighting from a place of victory and so when that giant of intimidation started to, to rear its ugly head he's going now oh, it's just time to take you out amen and if we could start to get this understanding in our hearts it would help us as we are approaching these giants of intimidation in our personal lives Amen. And so again, instead of running away from the giants, you need to draw near to them. Okay, let's keep going. Um, verse 41, the Philistine came on and drew near to David, the man who bore the shield going before him. And when the Philistine looked around him and saw David, he scorned and despised him for he was but an adolescent with a healthy reddish color and a fair face. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you should come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. So now we got cursing going on. A lot of you guys don't understand that the reason too that this has been so intense is you guys have been under witchcraft attacks. That's the cursing that was going on. The, the enemy has been releasing curses over you. Amen. This is Python spirit. That's a feeling of feeling trapped or confined. This stuff is rearing its ugly head in your personal life. You know, that's the reason behind these bullying tactics, this fear, this intimidation, all of this has been going on in your personal life. Amen. But, you know, the thing that I want you to remember is that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus name. Amen. And so even though these curses of witchcraft, this chatter, these word curses, all of this stuff has been launched at you in your personal life, it's not going to stand, ladies and gents. But it is a contribution as to why the battle has felt so intense to a lot of you. Amen. There's been a ramp up of this stuff that's been going on in this hour, right? And again, that's so symbolic. You know, we were talking about how Goliath represents a, a bigger demonic principality stronghold, right? You know, this, this whole attack is working in tandem through this situation, ladies and gents. That's why the warfare has been so big in some of you guys' lives with these personal circumstances that you've been facing because you aren't just facing the diagnosis. You aren't just facing that relational problem. You aren't just facing that place of financial lack. You're facing this whole demonic network that has been set up against you trying to step into your destiny, ladies and gents. All right, verse 44. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Again, big intimidation talk still going on, right? Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, you come at me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. In other words, you're coming at me with all this stuff in the natural. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the ranks of Israel, whom you have defied. In other words, some of you guys have got to get this in your head, ladies and gents. You need to start talking to the devil, amen, and going, when you came against me, you came against God. You were defying Jesus' sickness by trying to attach yourself to my body. You were defying Jesus by trying to strip me of finances, devil. You were defying Jesus, 
Amen. And you've got to get this kind of an attitude about you, ladies and gents, not in a prideful or in a haughty way, but in a confident way of knowing who you are in Jesus and going, how dare you come against God? How dare you try to keep the children of Israel in a place of bondage? How dare you think that you're bigger than God? How dare you think that we're just going to sit down and let you take territory? Not -uh. as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So you got to get this about you. Get some swagger, ladies and gents. All right. Uh, verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Notice that he is calling things forth that be not as though they were. Amen. Before he faced off with the giant, before he was taken down, he announced the final result. Some of you guys need to be prophesying the God report over your situation. Some of you guys need to be saying, I'm healed. Some of you guys need to be saying, I've got the job. Some of you guys need to be saying, I'm married. Some of you guys need to be saying, I've got my new child. Amen. Some of you guys need to be saying, my spouse is delivered and saved. You know, whatever this looks like in your personal life, ladies and gents, call things that be not as though they were. Amen. And so he is proclaiming the God report over this situation. I've already got the victory. Amen. Through Christ, I've already got the victory. He says this day. Notice he didn't make it for a time in the future. This is the other thing that the enemy tries to get us to do. Faith is not associated with time. Ladies and gents, time is a concept, you know, that we operate here in the natural. Amen. But faith supersedes time. It can grab something in the spiritual realm on earth as it is in heaven and pull it out and make it manifest in the natural. Amen. Faith is the currency of heaven. Amen. And so notice that he, David didn't speak a delay over this. You know, I think a lot of times the enemy likes to tell us that the battle will go on for ages. No. Say it's done. Amen. This day, the victory is here. Amen. Start proclaiming the God report over your circumstances and then don't budge until it comes to pass, ladies and gents. All right. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will smite you and cut off your head and I will give the corpses... <laughs> I love this. <laughs> talk about smack talk, right? This is great. And I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Some of you guys need to be talking up. God's going to get every ounce of the glory when he comes through with my breakthrough. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse 47. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. In other words, not by just natural means, right? For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Again, David knew this battle is not just on me. The battle belongs to the Lord. I'm his representative here on the earth, right? He could use me, but the battle's not mine. The battle is the Lord's, amen? And that's why we're guaranteed the victory, amen? You guys have got to start rethinking the wiring of your brain, <laughs> amen? And aligning it with the God report and your thought life, okay? Verse 48. When the Philistine came forward to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. This is another talk that I do with you guys occasionally, but I'm going to pause here and say it again. All right. A lot of times we try to leave a lot of lag time in between when we go to face the giant and when God speaks the word into our personal lives. And if you leave too much lag time, you will start to get focused on how big that giant starts to look to you. Amen. You know, you will start to get focused on how, you know, scary the armor looks, on how tall he looks, on how long he's been lingering in your personal life. But the moment, it, this is the way it needs to happen. You get that word from God in your prayer time and you attack it in the natural immediately. Amen. Because when you leave that lag time, that's where unbelief can start to creep in. That's where the fear can ramp up. That's where the doubt is. Deal with it quickly and immediately. Ladies and gents, run towards these giants of intimidation and go in Jesus' name. No. Amen. Let's keep going. All righty. Verse 49. David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine, sinking into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. Notice in a moment this dude got taken out, right? It doesn't have to be hard. And then when you've got the God strategy, he can deal with this stuff pretty quickly. All right, verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck down the Philistine, and he slew him, but no sword was in David's hand. So he ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their mighty champion was dead, they fled. I think this is powerful too, okay? Notice, when the strong man, 
right? When this big principality, whatever this represents, right? When the bigger demonic giant of intimidation got taken out, the natural result is this army that they had been fighting for days and days and days, this Philistine army, all of them fled instantly when their warrior, quote unquote, was taken out. Amen. A lot of you guys don't understand. You're feeling like it's never going to end, right? Because you've been fighting this battle with all of these soldiers, quote unquote, in the spirit realm for ages now. But when you take out the big, think about this in terms of a natural army. Okay, Let, let's just pause because this is the way, whether you guys realize it or not, that God's armies are ranked <laughs> and that the devil's armies are ranked. Okay, so like think about this in terms of God's ranking. Okay, so in terms of God's ranking, you've got the higher up angels. Okay, so you've got like archangels, for example, like Gabriel and Michael, right? Those are the big guns, right? They get pulled out when you read really got to break through some situations, right? Then you've got some angels that rank underneath those. And then you've got some other angels that rank underneath those. It's kind of like in the army, you've got generals, you know, you've got people under them that are lower rank, all of this stuff, right? And so this is the way that the spirit realm is set up too. You've got these really high level demonic principalities that cover specific territories and regions that are a lot harder to take out. But a lot of you guys don't understand when you take out the big principalities, when you take out these big things that you guys have been coming up against, it takes out the little dudes. They're not little, right? <laughs> but it takes out the ones that are ranked under them in the process. And that's exactly what happened because this was not just a natural war, ladies and gents. A lot of you guys think are thinking you've just been battling against natural stuff. It's not natural. It's supernatural. It may have a natural face to it. Amen. But you have been very much engaging in a supernatural battle in your personal lives, ladies and gents. And the enemy is strategic in the way that he has set up these attacks against you. Amen. And so when Goliath got taken out, when this giant of intimidation got taken out, all of these Philistines, you know, that had been causing the weariness and these other attacks, they fled with them because who were they going to answer to? Their commander, quote unquote, got taken out. Amen. And so verse 52, and the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath. You see the tables have turned now, right? <laughs> and the gates of Ekron. So the wounded Philistines fell along the way from Shereem as far as Gath and Ekron. The Israelites returned from their pursuit of the Philistines and plundered their tents. And so basically, I'm not going to read the rest of this, but David also received everything that he was supposed to get in his personal life. So now, a lot of you guys don't understand. This next season, a lot of you guys need to claim this. You're going to plunder the enemy camp. You know, all those years that the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm has stolen from you guys, guess what? It's your turn to plunder. Amen. You guys need to get excited. I know it's tough. I know you're still facing the giant of intimidation in your personal life. I know that this is a critical moment for a lot of you guys. I know like it seems it's impossible, but guess what? Plundering is coming. Amen. The reward is coming where it's, it's really going to feel kind of like a, a chain reaction almost. I feel like in a lot of people's lives where when you knock out this big thing in the spirit realm that has been holding you back, there's, is going to release this blessing, which is going to unlock this blessing, which is going to unlock this blessing because you're ready for it, ladies and gents. And so I just want to encourage you guys today, do not give up in the midst of this warfare and run to the giant of intimidation. Don't run away from it and know that the battle is not all on you. Amen. It's through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. And God is releasing battle strategies in this hour. Do not give in to the place of fear. You know, I was having a conversation with a friend the other night via phone. And I was talking to her and we were kind of talking to each other back and forth, trying to give each other a pep talk. And basically we were talking about this whole concept of courage does not necessarily mean the absence of fear. We, you know, courage is sometimes doing things afraid. Amen. And I don't know how David felt in that moment facing that giant. The Bible does not tell us that. Maybe he did go in 110% confident. You know, maybe he wasn't at all afraid of that giant, but maybe he was. Ladies and gents, maybe he went in and did it anyway, afraid, because it needed to get done. Amen. You know, I think that so often we are reliant upon our emotions and our personal lives to dictate our decisions. And I'm not saying that there's zero merit to that. We need to use wisdom sometimes, right? But, you know, we need to go with what the God report says over what we feel like doing in the moment. I'm sure that Esther 
in the Bible did not feel like prancing into the king's court and potentially getting killed as a result of her actions, right? But she did it because it was the right thing to do. And then sometimes we've got to get in our sweet little noggins as Christians that sometimes God calls us to do hard things. I do that status with you guys a lot <laughs> on Facebook that we have an anointing for hard in our personal lives. Amen. You know, I, I wish our lives would be just 110% easy, but that's not always what God calls us to. Amen. Because he made you an overcomer. Amen. And the way that you overcome is by battling and overcoming something, right? It's by, you know, facing something in your personal life and coming out on the other side victoriously. And you can never face anything if your life is always just 100% easy. Amen. But it's what people will remember you for. Some of you guys, these battles that you are facing so much, it's going to be an incredible part of your testimony. These overcoming stories that you've got. And it's going to help to lead other people through this. Amen. I want to remind you guys of this and then I'll leave it here for today. When David overcame this giant, it was not only a victory for him in his personal life. Yes, he got all kinds of personal victories, but he also led out the entire nation of Israel. Amen. The entire nation of Israel experienced victory from one man's life. That's a lot of you guys. Some of you guys don't realize that nations are attached to this breakthrough. That's why the warfare has been so intense. Some of you guys have nations attached to these breakthroughs that it just feels like you have been so weary because you've been battling. That's how God's going to use you, ladies and gents. So don't you dare give up this fight. Ladies and gents, these giants of intimidation are staring and knocking at your door and causing all this fear and all this junk in your personal life. I want to tell you guys, you've already got the victory. Amen. Walk like you're a soldier in Christ. Talk like you've got the victory, ladies and gents, because you do. And it's not just through your strength. It's through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. And so don't give up in this season. Facing Goliath is not fun in our personal lives, but ultimately it'll be what you're known for one day if you don't give up. Amen. Hope you guys have a fantastic morning and I'll chat with you again soon.